Behold, a child's treasury of politicians refusing to answer very simple questions. Very simple questions about their own records. Uh, we're not like the other networks. We don't have a, a magic wall in particular. We just have a wall. But you sort of get the idea, right? You ready? Behold, a child's treasury. Ha! It works. Ha! All right, this is Mike Kaufman. Mike Kaufman is a Republican congressman from the great state of Colorado. And he, at one point, was flirting with the whole birtherism thing. Mike Kaufman told a group of donors in Colorado in May that he was not sure where Barack Obama was born, but that Mr. Obama, he said, quote, is just not an American. Now, a great reporter from the local NBC affiliate in Denver decided to ask Mike Kaufman about that, right? The, the questions that the reporter asked were totally reasonable questions. They were questions about Mike Kaufman and something Mr. Kaufman had done in public. Uh, but Mr. Kaufman's answers to those questions earned him a very proud place in our child's treasury of politicians refusing to answer very simple questions about themselves. Watch. After your comments about the president, do you feel that voters are owed a better explanation than just, I misspoke? I think that, um, as I, I stand by my statement, uh, that I misspoke and I apologize. Okay, and who are you apologizing to? You know, I stand by my statement that I misspoke and I apologize. I apologize. We talk to you all the time. You're a very forthcoming guy. Who's telling you not to talk and to handle you it know, like I, this? I stand by my statement that I wrote that you have. And I misspoke and I apologize. Was it that you thought it would go over well in Elbert County where folks are very conservative and you'd never say something like that in the suburbs? I stand by my statement that I misspoke and I apologize. Is there anything that I can ask you that you'll answer differently? You know, I stand by my statement that I misspoke and I apologize. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. That was Republican Congressman Mike Kaufman of Colorado. Obviously, he stands by his statement that he misspoke and he apologizes. Is that clear? Uh, right around that same time period, earlier this year, yeah, I love it, a Republican candidate uh, for Congress in Arizona, this guy, Jesse Kelly, uh, he earned his place in the child's treasury of politicians refusing to answer very simple questions about themselves. Uh, and he did so in a way that was so amazing, it made onlookers at the time, his own supporters who were standing right next to him while he was doing it, it made his own supporters laugh along audibly as it was happening. A great local ABC reporter in Arizona was asking Jesse Kelly very reasonable questions about whether he intended to accept a controversial endorsement that he got from an anti-immigrant group. Listen. Do you plan on accepting that endorsement this time? Our campaign is going to stay focused on lower gas prices, using American energy, lower taxes, and creating jobs. Do you plan on accepting that endorsement? Our campaign is going to stay focused on lower taxes, lowering gas prices, using American energy, and creating jobs. So is that a yes or a no? Our campaign is going to stay focused on lowering gas prices, creating jobs, and lowering gas prices using American energy. All right, so no comment. Our campaign is going to stay focused on lowering gas prices, creating jobs, and lowering taxes. All right, thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if they're laughing at you, but if you're not laughing, by definition, they're not laughing with you. Uh, Jesse Kelly, ladies and gentlemen, can you believe that he lost that election? Yeah. Uh, today, we got a couple of new entries. Yes. The gentleman uh, that's shown right here in our book, his name is Josh Mandel. Josh Mandel is a Republican running for the United States Senate from Ohio. He's the guy who's running against Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown. Now, Josh Mandel was pressed this week uh, by a very sharp local NBC reporter in Dayton, Ohio, about whether Mr. Mandel would have supported the auto bailout. Very specific question. And Mr. Mandel's amazing answer earns him a page in our child's treasury. This is so great. He blasted those, including Senator Brown and Republicans who supported the Wall Street bailout, but refused to say what he would have done with General Motors. I have a vision for taking the Dayton area, taking some of these auto plants and former and factories that used to be filled, filling them back up with Dayton area workers to make pipes and tubes and fittings for new manufacturing jobs here in the Miami Valley. Josh Mandel, I appreciate what you're saying, but would you have supported the GM bailout? Again, I will do everything I can as United States Senator to protect auto jobs and grow auto question. jobs. And we've talked quite a bit throughout the state of Ohio about all the great plans we have for protecting auto jobs here. You're not going to answer it, are you? Great seeing you. Great seeing you. Here's a very simple question about yourself. Would you have supported this policy? Yes, it is great seeing you. What happened to my, my, 
Uh, then there is the ongoing controversy this week, of course, over Republican Congressman Todd Aiken of Missouri and his remarks in the past few days uh, that rape cannot cause pregnancy. That has turned into a political nightmare for a whole bunch of conservative politicians who have co-sponsored legislation with Todd Aiken about rape and pregnancy, uh, her, or who at least share his political beliefs that if a woman does get pregnant when she's raped, um, the government should force her to give birth against her will. So one of the politicians um, uh, who's kind of in trouble over the Aiken thing is the Republican candidate for Senate in Washington state. His name is Michael Baumgartner, uh, and he earned his place in our child's treasury of politicians refusing to answer very simple questions about themselves and their records. Uh, when a local Seattle reporter interviewed him about whether he really did agree with Todd Aiken that rape victims should be forced by the government to give birth against their will, asked about that policy position, uh, which is in fact his policy position, a Washington Republican Senate candidate Mike Baumgartner's response was this, and I quote, Go F yourself. That's what he said to the reporter, except he did not say F. Uh, Mr. Baumgartner actually put it in print. He put it in an email. Um, my favorite part of this entry in our child's treasury is the reporter's response to getting that email from the Senate candidate. The reporter's response was, quote, question mark, is this really Senator Baumgartner? <laughs> yes, yes it was. But he does not want to answer any questions about how much he is like Todd Aiken on that policy. And of course, neither does the brand new star of our child's treasury of politicians refusing to answer very simple questions about themselves and their records. And that, of course, would be the guy with the dog-eared page. Yeah, the Republican vice presidential candidate, Paul Ryan. The Todd Aiken controversy this week has earned Paul Ryan a special place in the child's treasury because of a local interview that Paul Ryan just gave to a CBS reporter in Pittsburgh. Now, Paul Ryan, as you know, has the exact same position as Todd Aiken when it comes to abortion, when it comes to pregnancy and rape and how much sway the government has over your decisions in those matters. Both men think that rape victims should be forced by the government to bear their rapist child against their will. But when Paul Ryan was asked about that position by this local reporter in Pittsburgh, he did everything he could to not answer for his own positions. It was amazing. His statements were outrageous, over the pale. I don't know anybody who would agree with that. Rape is rape, period, end of story. Ryan, like Romney, distanced himself from Aiken's remarks. But in Congress, he joined Aiken in opposing abortions, even when a woman has been raped. Should abortions be available to women who are raped? Well, look, I've, I'm proud of my pro-life record. And I stand by my pro-life record in Congress. It's something I'm proud of. Um, but Mitt Romney is the top of the ticket, and Mitt Romney will be president, and he will set the policy of the Romney administration. You sponsored legislation that has the language forcible rape. What is forcible rape, rape as opposed is rape, to? It's rape is rape, period, end of story. Uh, so that forcible rape language meant nothing to you at the time? Rape is rape, and there's no splitting hairs. Rape is rape, and there's no splitting, splitting hairs. The, the, the problem for Paul Ryan is that he has been splitting hairs legally on what rape is. His entire career he's been doing that. Paul Ryan co-sponsored a bill last year with Todd Aiken to redefine rape in federal law. It was H.R. 3, the third bill introduced by the Republican majority when they took control of the House in 2010. That bill initially tried to redefine what rape is. It created a new category that they called forcible rape. Why do you need that new category? You need that new category to distinguish that kind of rape from other kinds of rape, to single out a subclass of rape that would allow you to still make a decision on your own pregnancy while victims of other subtypes of rape would not get that privilege in Paul Ryan's America. Paul Ryan was an original co-sponsor of the bill to redefine rape, to make it harder on rape victims who wanted to get an abortion. As our own Kelly O'Donnell reported today, Paul Ryan also attempted to redefine rape a year earlier offering another piece of legislation that allowed for abortion in limited circumstances. Quote, unless the pregnancy is the result of an act of forcible rape or incest. You know, the real kind of rape, not that fake kind of rape. That doesn't qualify. But now when Paul Ryan is asked about his own record on this, his own record to redefine what rape is, you sponsored legislation that has the language forcible rape. What is forcible rape, rape as opposed is rape, to? It's rape is rape, period, end of story. Uh, so that forcible rape language meant nothing to you at the time? Rape is rape. 
and there's no splitting hairs. That's amazing. That that is amazing. I mean, it's amazing if you're some you know Senate or some congressional special election candidate. But when you're vice president, I mean, you sponsored legislation to do X. Well, I believe not X, but you sponsored legislation to do X. Yes, and I proudly believe not X. Also, I'm very proud of my record. There is a broader issue here. This is a test for the American media. This is a test for the press. Paul Ryan's record on abortion is just about identical to Todd Akin's record on abortion. But Paul Ryan not only does not want to talk about that, he is trying to rewrite history about it. And good on that local reporter in Pittsburgh for asking about this. I mean, Paul Ryan obviously needs to continue to be asked about this until he actually gives a straight answer about it. This is a test for the press. And some of the press, a lot of the local press actually, has turned out to be great in asking these questions and doing it in a dogged way, doing it in a really hard-nosed way that shows that they've done their homework before the interview. The conservative Beltway press, on the other hand, not so much. There's been a lot of attacks already against you, but you, you kind of experienced this beforehand. What is your relationship with President Obama? Explain how reform in the tax code would help people. Do you think Obama wants trillion dollar plus deficits every year? Tell us about your foreign policy experience. All right, your kids and uh, wife having they're a good time great. out yeah, there? They're doing fine. Looks like they're, they're having fun on yeah. stage with you. Yeah, they do. They like it. Yeah. Congressman, great to see you yeah. again. Thanks, Thank Sean. you so much for your time. Great. In the midst of the whole Todd Akin, Paul Ryan rape controversy, not even a question about Todd Akin or rape when you've got Paul Ryan sitting right there? In that same hour, they dealt with the Paul Ryan, Todd Akin rape issue using correspondence and other discussants, but not the actual Paul Ryan. Why would you ask him about it? Not everybody in the press has to be uh, that bad at this. Um, again, this, this is what Paul Ryan now says about the issue of rape and pregnancy. Rape is rape, and there's no splitting hairs. So we still need a straight answer from Paul Ryan on this. What about all of the times that you personally tried to split hairs on what constitutes rape? Is there gonna be an apology here? Did you not mean it when you did that in Congress more than once? Have you changed your mind about it? But while we are working on what the appropriate follow-up questions here need to sound like with Paul Ryan, running for vice president now, don't just stop at the splitting hairs about rape nonsense. Oh, there's more. His statements were, Outrageous, over the pale. I don't know anybody who would agree with that. I don't know anybody who would agree with that. Todd Akin said something that nobody has ever espoused. I've never heard that. Nobody believes that. That crazy guy. Let's get rid of him and that'll take care of our problem. You know, it's not actually true to characterize Todd Akin in that way. Todd Akin himself has been citing somebody by name and explaining where he came up with this cockamamie theory that your body, when you're raped, can distinguish that the sperm in question is from a rapist and should therefore be rejected as opposed to other sperm. Todd Akin cited an anti-abortion doctor named John Wilkie in making this case. Think Progress posted audio from a conservative talk show interview with Todd Akin today in which Todd Akin repeatedly references this Dr. Wilkie by name. You know, Dr. Wilkie has just released a statement and part of his letter, I think he just really stated it very clearly. Well, who, who is Dr. Wilkie, who Todd Akin is citing as the source for his crazy theory that has now captivated all of American politics? Who is Dr. Wilkie? It's Dr. John Wilkie, a former Mitt Romney presidential campaign surrogate. A guy important enough to Mitt Romney that the 2008 Romney campaign put out a standalone solo press release headlining his endorsement. So Paul Ryan doesn't know anybody who would agree with Todd Akin's comments? He says, you talk to your running mate about it? London's Daily Telegraph newspaper is reporting tonight that this Dr. Wilkie, the guy who convinced Todd Akin that you can't get pregnant if you're raped, the Telegraph is reporting that he says he personally met with Mitt Romney as recently as this past October. So not the last time Mitt Romney ran for president, but this time. From the, from the Telegraph, quote, Dr. Wilkie told the Daily Telegraph that he did meet Mr. Romney during a presidential primary campaign stop in the doctor's home city of Cincinnati, Ohio, in October last year. Local news News reports at the time noted that the candidate held private meetings during the visit. Here's the quote from Dr. Wilkie. He told me, thank you for your support. We agree on almost everything. And if I am elected president, I will make some major pro-life pronouncements. Dr. Wilkie said that to the Daily Telegraph in a telephone interview on Tuesday. Now, caveats here. This is the Telegraph, which is 
A, the British press, which is not what it used to be, and B, uh, it's the Telegraph, which even for the British press is not exactly all that confidence inspiring. But it is supposedly not a paraphrased quote, but a direct quote from this person who's very, very important in this national issue right now. And it would be good to hear directly from the Romney campaign if this is true or if they're denying that this meeting took place. So far, the Romney campaign is refusing to answer any questions about this. We asked the Romney campaign yesterday whether Mitt Romney has met with Dr. John Wilkie to discuss these issues, given how important Mr. Romney said he was to his campaign the last time he ran for president. So far, the campaign has not responded to any of our questions. They have not said no. They have blanked us.